Hello, my bookish friends. Whoa, that was aggressive. Hello, my bookish friends. Welcome, welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley, where we like to read Riley, not take ourselves too seriously, and have some fun with books. Did I say I was Elizabeth? What's happening? I'm Elizabeth. I said that right. How are you guys? Ugh. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about books that include the podcast trope as part of the plot device. I want to say off the bat, as a disclaimer, all of these books have several, several trigger warnings, content warnings, which I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but most of them are very dark. If that's an issue for you, please look them up before diving into them because a lot of them are hard hitting, just very, very dark shit here. Okay. So just, just so you know. Secondly, I highly recommend all of these books on audio, just so you know, because we're dealing with podcasts in general, it allows the people who produce the podcasts an extra level of creativity to add in some kind of features that are typically heard in podcasts, and it makes the experience even more enjoyable. Lastly, I am also going to tell you guys about some of my favorite true crime podcasts after I tell you about five books that include podcasts. So if you wanna see that, hang in there and you will see that at the very end. All right, so let's get started, shall we? The first book I wanna to recommend to you today is called Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a YA mystery thriller. I gave it 3.5 stars. I really enjoyed this. It has a 4.10 on Goodreads, so kudos to that. This was released in 2018 and the name of the fictional podcast in this book is the girls. Okay, so just some quick stats. Now let's get into the story. So we're following Sadie. Ugh, she's been through so much in her life. She's been traumatized. She has dealt with um, sexual abuse in her past. Her mother is an addict and doesn't take care of her and her sister. So she has become this sort of mother figure to her younger sister, Maddie. The very beginning of this story, she tells us that Maddie was murdered. It's her life goal to track down this murderer and seek revenge. I've heard this referred to as the YA Kill Bill. I've also heard it referred to as a gut-punching piece of modern American noir, which I think fits perfectly. Sadie has a hard time expressing herself because she suffers from a severe stutter. She feels like she's the underdog, like no one understands her, like people are judging her. and. She's constantly um, battling with that within herself. This is really a mystery within a mystery because we're not necessarily searching for who killed her sister because she knows and she tells us at the beginning, but we're following her journey. And then within that, we're also following West McRae, who is a radio host. He's working on a segment about small forgotten American towns. He comes to this gas station and overhears this conversation about Sadie and her journey to find her sister's killer and he's intrigued. And so he decides he's gonna start this podcast and he's gonna follow her on her journey and try to catch up with her. Meanwhile, the second part of this mystery is really um, following the podcast to see if they can find her and catch her in time. This was really beautifully written and well done and I highly recommend it. Moving on to the next one. Number two, we have Six Stories by Matt Wesolowski. Okay, I gave this one four stars really enjoyed it. It has a 3.8 on Goodreads. And this is another, it's actually a dual timeline mystery thriller. The podcast in this book is actually called Six Stories as referenced in the title of the book. This, like I said, has dual timeline. The first timeline is in 1997 when the body of Tom Jeffries is discovered in this the forested wilderness of Scarclaw fell. He had been missing for a year. This group of kids was camping and something went wrong. What went wrong? I don't know, but it was assumed to be an accident, a result of misadventure. Nothing twice was thought about it really. Our second timeline is set in 2017 where we have Scott King, an investigative journalist who is a cult internet figure. No one knows who he is, but he's decided that he's going to investigate this case and see was it actually an accident or not. 
So then we're following these kids that were involved in the 1997 event that had gone camping with Tom and we're getting their side of the story. Scott is interviewing them and with each interview, you learn one more little piece of the story. You kind of are able to put it together yourself, which is awesome. There's also another element included in this that has to do with the kind of lore and legend of that culture of Scarclaw Fell. There's this monster type boogeyman situation and so it very much has that camping vibe, that story under a lit fire type of vibe and verges on horror. It's very atmospheric, it's dark, damp, creepy, swampy, woodland vibes. So I really loved this. Number three, moving on, we have The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I have mentioned this before in one of my other videos and I really love this story. I gave it five stars. It's got 4.09 on Goodreads and it's a psychological thriller. The thing I love most about this is that it has several elements that make up my favorite books and that it's epistolary, meaning that it has references to something that's been written down or yeah there's letters in, involved in this um, it's a dual timeline as well from th this small town in Neapolis North Carolina and we're investigating present time and 25 years prior it also has the podcast element so I couldn't be happier I mean this is everything in this says I'm gonna love it and I did we're following Rachel crawl who again is this Sarah Koenig serial type podcasting figure. She's on her, I think, third season of her podcast and she has a lot of pressure to make sure it's as big of a hit as the previous ones were. So she goes to Neapolis, North Carolina, and she's following this rape trial in which this kind of golden boy swimmer type figure is accused of raping the 16 year old goddaughter of the local police chief. He is supposedly on his way to the Olympics and just like the pride of this town. So Rachel is gonna go cover this trial. But the thing is when she gets there, she starts getting these notes that are left on her car or in like random places where nobody should know where she is. And come to find out these letters are from Hannah who had a sister named Jenny that died 25 years prior in the same small town of an accidental drowning or so it was claimed. Hannah is not under the belief that this was accidental. She in fact believes that this was murder. And as Rachel begins to ask some questions that people do not want to answer around the town, we start to see some parallels between both this past timeline and this present timeline. There's a lot of discussions about rape culture and how society treats victims and re-victimizing them and sexual abuse against women in general. Um, we're talking about the price of a reputation and small town secrets. And there's so much commentary and discussion in this that I think is very topical and also important. It's thrilling in the way that you're following this story, but it's also terrifying in the sense that these are actual real life issues that we deal with. Yeah, so again, a lot of trigger warnings here, so definitely look this up if that's an issue for you, especially concerning rape and sexual violence against women. Okay, next, I think fourth, we have If I Disappeared by Elijah. Elijah. Eliza Jane Brazier. So this is her debut novel. So this is another mystery thriller about a true crime fanatic. Uh, I gave this one star. I'm not trying to poo-poo on this. Listen, listen, hear me out. I feel like it's relevant to tell you guys about this because if you are into books about podcasts, then you may want to read this and this could very well be a me thing, okay? So I'm not under the guise or I'm not under the impression that because I didn't like something, no one else is gonna like it. So that's why I felt it was imperative to include this on this list because I still want you guys to find out about these books too. If you're interested, you may love this. Who knows, it could be that. But listen, I gave it one stars. It does have a 3.17 on Goodreads, which is a little low, but people obviously enjoyed it more than I did. 
we're following Sarah. She's a true crime fanatic. She's going through some hard times. I think she's about 30-ish and she went through a divorce. She lost a child uh, during pregnancy. And so that's another trigger warning there. She is grieving and she's just not handling things well. So she's going to this favorite true crime podcast of hers to kind of escape and the podcast is called ah oh this is the most clever podcast name of all of these it's called murder she spoke which i loved the host of this podcast her name's rachel bard sarah thinks basically like they're best friends like she doesn't know her but this is the kind of feeling that you get when you listen to certain personality types on podcasts over and over is you get this feeling that you're friends and i suppose on youtube as well um but you don't actually know each other Rachel misses one episode in the week like she posts like once a week and she missed an episode and so Sarah all of a sudden says oh my gosh something has happened to her I know what's happening she's been leaving me clues she thinks she's been getting clues in her podcast and she thinks she's the only one that can solve this crime she thinks something must have happened to Rachel and she has to be the one to save her so she drives up to Northern California in search of Rachel's hometown which is on this ranch called Happy Camp ranch. She meets Rachel's eccentric parents and they give her a job on this farm as a ranch hand, which she has no experience in, but she figures she can pull it off and somehow they just say, all right, come on. Things start to unfold and I don't want to get into the plot, but here's what I do want to do is I want to give you a list of positives and negatives so that I can make sure I stress the things that I did like about this and I because I don't want I want to be as unbiased as possible the things that I liked about this it's very atmospheric um, so you're getting Northern California vibes you're getting ranch horses cowboys vast fields of wheat also like scary dark cabins and old secrets and so you're getting all of these vibes secondly it's very suspenseful I enjoyed my favorite part of thrillers is trying to guess who, who done it and what happened so that most of this book I really had a lot of fun trying to figure out what happened here and there what went on also this has a second person narrative where Sarah is telling the story basically as if she's writing a letter to Rachel and then we're also getting excerpts of the pack the actual podcast itself that are inserted into this narrative so it's a really original unique way of doing this and that may not work for everybody but i actually enjoyed it i thought it was interesting also it had a really strong start i personally just didn't enjoy the ending basically i have issues with the ending and how this turns out as a true crime fan i find that it has some plot holes and i don't feel like it made the most sense statistically without giving anything away. The way this turned out ended up being very statistically rare, which I'm not saying it's impossible, it is possible. But that being said, I really would have liked to have gone into the motivations of that and why I needed to know why this person did what they did. Here comes my dog. Also, I really thought this could have gone in a direction where it was very much a discussion about obsession and also this whole true crime phase that that is happening right now it would have been really cool if we talked about why women in particular are the main demographic of this true crime shows and personally for me i will say that it comes from a place of feeling vulnerable and feeling like if you can learn something and what to avoid in order to keep yourself in a safer position that's where it, it started with me i also really happen to enjoy dark subject matter and dark things in general so that contributes as well but it comes from a place of feeling like you're vulnerable to these men that kill so I would have given up some of these twists if I had had more backstory and more information about these characters and I just had really high expectations because this came out in January and it was one of my most highly anticipated books of 2021 Let's move on. Next we have Radio Silence by Alice Oseman. This one is not a thriller um, per se, but it is actually more of a YA contemporary coming of age story, but I had to include it because it does focus around a podcast, but it's very different from all of these other books that I've mentioned today. I gave this a four star. It has a 4.16 on Goodreads. The name of the podcast included is called Universe City as in university, universe city. 
that's really yeah, cute too. There was a lot of really diverse representation in this book, which I absolutely applaud Alice Osman for. We talk about feminism, we talk about sexual identity, mental health, but really this is about finding out the kind of person that you want to be and finding out, learning about yourself and your own values. What makes a person have value in this idea of school and academia, measuring your worth in a test score and how humans are worth so much more than that and that can't encompass everything, every part of who we are. So a lot about societal pressure, a lot about social media and your privacy kind of put out in the public realm, trolls, depression, a lot of trigger warnings here too, just be warned. I put the disclaimer, but be warned. This is so, it's such a beautiful story. Um, we're following Frances who, she's in her final year of high school and she is a workaholic a steady bug she just wants to all she cares about is getting into that elite school or at least that's all she works for but she's an artist at heart and we're exploring art as well in this story she is obsessed with this podcast called universe city and in universe city the host and the creator is unknown it's a podcast slash youtube thing in the podcast you have a suit wearing student detective looking for a way to escape a sci-fi, monster-ridden, dystopian university. Frances loves this podcast. No one knows who actually makes it. And then she meets Aled. I think it's how you pronounce it. Aled? 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 And they have this beautiful friendship. Alice Oseman comes out and says something along the lines of, like directly talking to the reader, just breaks that fourth wall and comes out and says, um, you think because there's a boy and a girl that this is going to be a love story and we're going to fall in love but just shut that down right now because that's not happening and I admire that in her that she is taking this time to focus on a platonic friendship where they feel seen and they can see each other and it's kind of a for me it's like a modern catcher in the rye because it's the beautiful rare depiction of teenagers I think that's it if you made it this far, thank you so much for hanging out. Please consider subscribing. If you know of any other books with this podcast trope, definitely send them my way. I want to know, I'm into it, I'm here for it, all of that. Now I'm gonna get into a few of my favorite podcasts. I do listen to a lot of podcasts. I'm gonna get into more of investigative podcasts, more episodic. They take one crime and follow it over the course of the entire season of the podcast, and they're more of investigative type journalists. The first one, obviously, is gonna be Serial. I would be remiss if I did not mention that. We are following the story of Adnan Syed, and um, Sarah Koenig is the host of the show, famously following the story of trying to figure out whether or not Adnan did kill his high school girlfriend. And so if this is your first foray into true crime podcasts and you have not by some, in some, by some way listened to this, please do. You'll love it. I'm so excited for you that you still have that to experience because it's so good. Nextly, I have The Teacher's Pet. This is an Australian podcast following investigative reporter Headley Thomas. He's following Lynn and Chris Dawson. Lynn disappeared 36 years prior and new evidence has been revealed. So he is investigating this case to figure out what the hell happened to Lynn. Just the Australian accent was really fun for me in general, but this case is very interesting. Things happen, highly recommend it. Next we have Dirty John, another really big one inspired a TV series called Dirty John as well. We're following Deborah Newell. She's a interior designer who did really well for herself and she meets this guy John and falls desperately in love with him very quickly. We come to find that his, her daughters take issue with him and we start to learn what type of a person John actually is. If you wanna learn about manipulation, gaslighting, just like really interesting psychological fucked upness and fuckery, this is the podcast for you. Very dark, but amazing and very satisfying ending. And it's true life. This happened. I also want to recommend Root of Evil, which is another incredible podcast. And this is following the case of the Black Dahlia, Elizabeth Smart, who was killed a long, long time ago. I don't, when is this? The early 1900s? 
So this is focusing on a new suspect called George Hodel, who was a very well-off doctor back in the day. And we're actually being told the story by two sisters who are his great granddaughters. They find uh, tapes that their mom recorded about their family and their family secrets and all of this crazy jacked up shit. Like there's so many trigger warnings in this too, let me just tell you. But they find these, these tapes, they play that for you, they interview people, they investigate their own family to figure out if their great grandfather is in fact the killer of the Black Dahlia. And it's so good. I believe they also, there's a show based on this podcast as well. Oh yes, it was fictionalized on TNT in a series called I Am The Night. So I haven't watched that, but I really want to. So that's gonna be it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed these recommendations. I hope you find something that you will love. And I appreciate you so much. Let me know any other podcasts that you might recommend. I've probably heard of them because I know I'm just a crazy podcast fiend, but if there are some little jewels out there that I don't know about, I would love to know. Yeah, anything podcast related and books related, let me know. I'm your girl. Let's talk about it down in the comments below. That's all I have for you guys today. I would like to remind you that life is short, so read widely. Cheers, and I'll see you next time.